Hi and welcome to Geeks for Geeks. Today we would be discussing the problem named as nine divisor. So now in this problem we need to find the count of numbers which satisfy two conditions. The first is a simple condition which is the number should be less than or equal to n and the next condition is that it should have exactly nine divisors. Okay. So now let us move forward and try to solve the sample test case. So now in the sample test case, we are given the value as 100. So in this 100 value, we have two values that have nine divisors. The values are 36 and 100, where the divisors of 36 are listed here and the divisors of 100 are listed here. So both the values are nine and if you check the number of divisors from one till the value 100 these are the only two numbers which have nine divisors okay so now by looking at this and thinking about this so the most simple approach that we can move forward is that we iterate and check each number okay so we would simply iterate number so we would simply iterate and check each number but the problem arises how would we check each number because iterating is easy iterating is easy by using a for loop but checking each number how would we do that so checking each number is absolutely very simple let us take an example like suppose 10 okay so let us take the example of 10 what we would do is we would just in the value of 10 suppose we want all the divisors of 10 so what we would do is we would iterate from 1 till the value of 10 and then we would check if the values we are iterating it completely divides the value 10 or not. How would we do that? We would use the modulo operator and this returns the remainder. So let's start iterating. So 10 modulo 1 okay so 10 modulo 1 would be 0. So yes this returns the remainder 0 that means it divides this completely so 1 is a divisor okay. So 1 is the divisor. Now the next value is 10 modulo 2 which is equal to the value 0 and 2 is also a divisor. Then 10 modulo 3 which gives us a remainder value of 1 or a remainder of 1. Then we go to 10 modulo 4 which gives a remainder of 2 and then we go to 10 modulo 5 which gives us a remainder 0 and then we go to 10 modulo 6 which gives us a remainder 4 10 modulo 7 which gives us a remainder 3 then 10 modulo 8 which gives us a remainder 2 10 modulo 9 which gives us a remainder 1 10 modulo 10 which gives us a remainder 0 so we can see that the values 1 2 5 and 10 are the values which give us the remainder 0 and yes these are the divisors. So for each number we can iterate from 1 till that number and then we can find them. Let us see what is the time complexity. So time complexity is that we would iterate from 1 to n and for each number we would check the number. So for one number we are doing big O of n operation. So for n numbers, that is multiplying n on both sides, we would be doing big O of n square operation. Okay. So now can we optimize it further on? We can optimize it further by looking at this fact that 1 and 10 appear in pairs. 2 and 5 appear in pairs. So we can say that these all divisors appear in pairs. So what we can do is we can only iterate Till square root of the value n and we would be able to do that. So now that would be an improvement over the time complexity where this would be root of n into n and the time complexity would be n root n. Okay. So now can we do better than this or not? Okay. Yes, we can do better than this. To do better than this, we need to have some observations. The observations are that let us look the sample test case. Now let's take a scenario also where you are not given the sample test case. Okay. 
or not the values okay like the values 36 and 100 is not given here 36 and 100 is mentioned but let's take a scenario where 36 and 100 is not mentioned so what you can do is you can simply run a loop from 1 till the value 100 and you can take out the values and then observe the values which have those okay so now let's do the prime factorization for the value 36 if you observe for 36 this would be 2 and this would be 18 this would be 9 this would be 3 so this is nothing but 2 to the power 2 into 3 to the power 2 so now let's have 1 so 1 and the number itself would all, always be there so 1 and 36 would always be there okay so now let us move forward and try to have that so next one is 2 so this is 2 to the power 1 we can write that this is 3 3 to the power 1 we can write that next we have 4 this is nothing but 2 to the power 2 this is 6 so 2 to the power 1 multiplied by 3 to the power 1 next one is 9 that is nothing but 3 to the power 2 next one is 12 that is nothing but 3 to the power 1 multiplied by 2 to the power 2 that is 4 and multiplied by 3 and this is 19 so this is 9 multiplied by 2 which is 3 to the 3 square multiplied by 2 and this is equal to 36 36 is already been done so if you observe that we have if we have something as a square and b square where a and b both are prime we can have here seven combination and two combination would be given by one and the number itself okay similarly we can do it for 100 also like let us try to do it for 100 let's have 100 then we have 50 then we have 25 then we have 5 and 5 so we can say that 2 square multiplied by 5 square so 1 and 100 itself so 1 and 100 itself is already counted we need to find 7 more numbers so we can have the 2 to the power 1 this is 2 to the power 2 this is 5 to the power 1 this is 2 to the power 1 into 5 to the power 1 this is 4 multiplied by 5 this is equal to 2 to the power 2 multiplied by 5 to the power 1 okay this is 5 to the power 2 and this is 5 25 5 square multiplied by 2 which is 25 multiplied by 2 is equals to 50 and then 100 itself so this is how you can see that if a number is again i would again summarize it if a number is in the form of a square and b square and a are prime numbers so we can have it now if you see some more examples you would see that first so we can drive a conclusion that a square multiplied by b square if it is less than n and a and b are both prime then we have a number okay now let's talk about the second scenario so we already know so one would always be there so if we find a prime number to the power 8 then we can have 1 then p then p square then p to the power cube then p to the power 4 5 6 7 and 8 okay so this 8 values plus 1 values we can have that so we can say that if a prime number square that is p1 square p1 square multiplied by p2 square if it is less than n then we would have a counter of 1 we would do c plus plus and if we have a prime number whose power of 8 is less than equal to n then we would say that yes in this scenario also we would do c plus plus so in both counter plus plus so in both the scenarios we need prime numbers that are less than n we need prime numbers less than n so as we can see that we need to have prime numbers to the power 2 so the problem boils that no prime number would ever cross root n no prime number would ever cross root n why because we have the work of p square so if we do p square then the prime number would definitely be less than root of n less than equal to root of n 
okay so now this is what we would do so we would find all primes less than find all prime numbers less than equal to square root of m that is root of m okay so after finding the prime number so number of prime numbers are very less okay so even if you go till the value of 10 to the power 3 or 10 to the power 6 the number of the number of prime numbers are absolutely very less okay so what we can do is we can just suppose this is a b c d suppose we have a b c d as the prime numbers okay let's suppose these are the prime numbers less than equal to n so what we can do is we can simply iterate over them like we can see a square multiplied by b square if it is less than equal to n we would increment the count then we would do a square multiplied by c square then we would do a square multiplied by d square we can do that and next in the same scenario we would do b square multiplied by c square and d square so a multiplied with all the numbers then b multiplied with these all numbers c multiplied with these all numbers d multiplied with nothing so we can have a nested loop where the first one would be iterating on the primes the next one would be iterating on the numbers after that okay or else there is one more thing that suppose we have a b c d so the best one is that we have a and then we start counting forward so the comparisons we would have is a b a c a d okay and then from b we would have b c b d okay so if we just look forward in the right in the right in the right hand side direction okay so if we just look forward c and d and d won't be there so if we just make pairs of two then these are the number of pairs but if we start iterating on all the numbers apart from that we would have a b a c and a d which is absolutely same kind of thing but you would see that here we have b and then here we would have again a so a b and b a is same so to not have this confusion like p1 multiplied by p2 square is absolutely the same and we don't want to have that we don't want to count the same thing again so either you run a loop and divide it by 2 or you just move forward that when i am at i the j would be at i plus 1 please remember this condition you would face up otherwise you would face a problem in the implementation so please see why j's values is more than i okay and the next one is while iterating over the prime numbers we would just check if to the power 8 is less than equal to n or not if it is we would increment the count okay so now the problem arises that how would we find all the primes now to find all the primes we would be using the idea of prime c so prime c is a prerequisite here please go and learn prime c then come back to this video and you would understand it crystal clear okay so now let us move to the implementation and we would have all the primes then we would just check over them now that we would check for two conditions that is a multiplied by b a square multiplied by b square first we would have this the next is a to the power 8 so all of the primes to the power 8 and this so now let us move to the implementation okay so now there is a small modification that i am doing instead of the tedious task to write long long int again and again i have defined it using lm okay so now i would first find the limit so limit would be till the value of square root of n so sqrt square root of n plus one why take the risk let's take it plus one okay and then we would have a vector of ln because this is also long long end this is also long long end so everything let us do everything in long long end okay so vector of ln s of limit plus one and then everything would be true 
just like we do in the prime c first we mark everything as true okay and then we would have a vector vector of ln and then we would name it as prime and here we would save all the primes till the limit okay so now let's start the iteration directly from i is equals to 2 so i is equals to 2 so long so long long i is equals to 2 and i is less than equal to limit i is less than equal to limit and we would do i plus plus now if at this point also this has turned out to be a true value what we would do is primes dot push back the value okay i why because if it has been prime till this point it would be prime so we would be simply inserting it in this okay and then we would be marking all the multiples of that as composite number so i multiplied by 2 i is less than equal to limit and j plus equals to i and we would say that s of j is equals to the value 0 and then we would now we have all the prime numbers that we needed then we would initialize the count as 0 and then we would have int n is equals to primes dot size itself okay and then we would start iterating over this but for int i is equals to 0 i is less than equal to n and i plus plus so first we would check for prime to the power 8 prime to the power 8 that would give us 8 divisors and then 1 itself so in total we would have 9 so if pow of primes i okay to the power 8 is less than equal to the value n here it is written less than equal to n if it is less than equal to n we would simply do c plus plus okay then we would have for int j is equals to i plus 1 why because we don't want to count p1 multiplied by p2 and then again p2 multiplied by p1 that is why we are just looking forward okay i have already explained you then j is less than n and then j plus plus okay so now we would check if power of primes of i to the power 2 multiplied by power of primes of j to the power 2 is less than equal to the value m if that is the scenario then what we would do is we would do simply a count of plus plus okay so now we would come down and we would simply return the value of c now let us compile and run for the sample test case okay we are getting a output output for the sample test case now let us try to submit it and see the verdict and yes we got an ac that's it for today thank you and have a nice day